In this tutorial, I want to show you how to create your first post on WordPress. I know in the last one I showed you how to create your WordPress site and then work a little bit with the home page. This one is going to show you how to actually create your first post. Okay, so here on the dashboard, you have some, you know, stats to show you who's been viewing your pages, which you will use at the end of the semester to kind of wrap up your posts. And um, they give you some quick links here as well. If you do tab on this, click on this tab, the reader view, this is kind of like a feed. So if you want to follow other writers, other websites, other blogs, you can do so just by finding them and following them. I recommend that you follow some uh, blogs and websites that might have to do with your topic. I'm going to switch back over here to my sites. And now I'm going to go down over here to the left to posts. Now what we're going to do here on WordPress is mostly work with posts. Every new post that you have will be uh, you know, an article that you're writing. So once we click here on posts, you may see some sample posts already created. I'm gonna go ahead and create an add new post. And from there, it might give you an option to switch to a new editor. Uh, WordPress is testing out these different types of editors. And I recommend that you switch to the new editor if it does give you that option. That's the one I'm working with here. If it doesn't, it'll look very similar to this. And so um, here it's gonna give us a title. So I definitely recommend giving it a catchy title. Um, let's say just uh, lemon, pepper, chicken. Um, and you know, you can give it you know any kind of headline you want. Obviously that's kind of a boring one. So you might wanna work on that a little bit. I usually don't write my headline until the end of the story anyway. So here it's telling you to start writing. Um, obviously anything that you type here, um, you can just kind of go to town writing whatever you want to here in the paragraph setting. Uh, once you have that text written, it does give you this toolbar that allows you to change uh, the type of text that you see. So if you want it actually to be a heading, you could change that. And then it gives you the option between headings two, three, and four, so different sizes of headings. Uh, we'll get to more of that when we start talking about HTML. Uh, if you want to switch it back to a paragraph, you can. And, and in some cases, you might want to do a drop quote um, and things like that. So definitely just go ahead and, and leave it kind of as a paragraph. We generally like to write our posts with a left alignment. Uh, and so it, it can get kind of hard to read long paragraphs of text when everything is centered. So we always recommend that you align text left. Now, if you want to bold different options, you can do bolds, italics, and obviously you can add links as well. I'm gonna go ahead and delete this, and I'm gonna just get some lorem ipsum text. So once you have your text, um, obviously you could even write this in Word and paste it in, that works just as well. Uh, you can take these items and bold them just by selecting them, italicizing certain words if you want to. We can kind of even see what a text block would look like if it was in a drop quote. Um, as you're writing, uh, we do require that you have one link, okay? So as, as we're reading down here, if you wanted to take a, you know, a link to, if you were talking about you know, human happiness or something like that, whatever you were trying to explain, um, once you take that word that you've selected, you can click on the link button here, and this is gonna allow you to type in any URL that you might wanna put in this and so if you link to wikipedia.org that's totally fine we recommend that you open it in a new tab and what that means is when the user clicks on that link it'll open it in a new tab or a new window in their browser and that's always good because uh, you want them to stay on your site you want you don't necessarily want them to leave your site and go to another one you do want them to stay on your site so when they open in a new tab now suddenly they're still on your page, but yet they can also read about um, this article that you might have. Now I recommend when it comes to links to do something relevant, something that you would want to kind of explain a little bit in more in depth, but without having to take up your precious word count. So if you were doing a report on maybe a step-by-step -step on how to fix a radiator in a Jeep or something like that, Maybe as you start talking about one of the mechanical parts, like you know, trying to take the radiator off, you don't want to necessarily explain what a radiator is. Uh, there are plenty of websites that already explain what that is. So in which case you would just highlight the word radiator and you would link to an article that kind of talked about what a, uh, a radiator is. And so think about the articles that you might want to include. Usually I like to include ones that are good reference articles for context. 
uh, that's going to be a, a big need for, for people as they read is to give them context. So um, maybe find articles that are relevant, videos and things like that. Now beyond just the link, um, we also have some other options that you can, can do here. These are basically toolbar options. You could even change the text bar color. Uh, you can underline. I highly recommend that you don't underline, mainly because when you see an underline as a user, you think that it's a link. So I recommend that you don't really use that one very often. Uh, but there are just some more options here. Um, beyond that, you can take this block. Uh, WordPress works in blocks. As you can see, each of these paragraphs, basically, as I highlight over them, will basically be big blocks of text. You can see them highlighted with the blue um, rectangle around them. You can uh, insert a block after it or before it. So if I wanted to insert maybe a picture afterward, I could just click Insert After, and now I've got a new block down here. Um, likewise, you could take that and insert um, before. You can insert something before it as well. And once you've added, you know, some text, you can see here even at the bottom as we're as we're creating, you can add these at any time uh, and move them around and everything like that. But I'm going to go ahead and click up here on this empty block. And over here on the right, you've got a little plus sign. This allows you to add a new block. Now you can do that here within the paragraph. You can also do that up here in the top left. It allows you to add a block. Now, I talked a little bit about blocks uh, in the last video about home pages, and I would recommend scrolling down, at least for now, just clicking on the common blocks. Now, these are the ones that you're gonna use the most often, um, and there are other blocks here listed as well. Some have to do with layouts, um, some have to do with um, you know, different widgets that you may add. Um, and so we'll see what those uh, bring us. But I'm gonna go ahead and add an image. So I'm gonna click here on the image block. And here with the image, you get some, you know, change the alignment left, centered, or right. And I'm gonna go ahead and upload the image. I'm gonna go ahead and search for an image that I found here. Go ahead and press open. And this is going to be the image that I can insert. Remember, the images that you use in this class should either be taken by you or you should have permission to use them or they're from a fair use site. I always recommend that if you got this from somewhere to put it in the caption, image from pixabay.com or wherever you might have found it or if you took it, it's always good to give yourself a byline. Uh, uh, once you have your image here, you can link on this image if you want to. Um, and you can change the alignment if you need to or anything like that. Um, and basically that's gonna be the requirement for your images that you just kind of put, put it in within your site um, and you can um, you know, move that around if you need to. Now the cool thing about uh, WordPress is it does interpret you know, links directly. So if I did go to YouTube and click on, let's just go ahead and click on this first video here, you can take this video uh, link and just paste it right within WordPress and it will automatically embed it, which is pretty great. And so you may want to add those kinds of media to your site. Now, as you add these blocks, just don't get too crazy with it. I think for now, just get used to using uh, this, the standard text blocks. Make sure you know how to add a link and add images. Uh, over here on the right, you do get some options in the document tab. Um, some of these allow you to make your, you know, uh, post private until you're ready to publish it. Uh, other ones, if you want to press protect it, that could be an option as well. You can also schedule these. So if I wanted this to go live tomorrow at, you know, or next month or, or whatever, you could always uh, schedule it just like you could um, for any kind of social media posts. Uh, now the permalink is what the original link will be when you post it, and I haven't published it yet. So I wouldn't get, grab that just yet, but that will be the permanent post once I publish it. You can also add categories, which allow you to, you know, categorize your posts. If you have different types of uh, recipes, some would be desserts, some will be meats, some will be, you know, whatever. You could add them into categories and even add that into a menu on your, on your site as well. And some themes require you to use a featured image. Now, a featured image is kind of a thumbnail image that pops up. If you have like five posts, uh, fed into your home page, it's probably going to grab the featured image. So if you try this out and it doesn't show that featured image, you might need to upload one. So I'm just going to go ahead and, you know, just add this random image as my featured image. It has nothing to do with the text. Um, and then I can go up here and press publish. 
Now it's going to make sure, are you sure you want to publish it? Do you want to um, share this to your um, social media? I don't. I don't want to put that on my Twitter account right now. Um, then I'm going to go ahead and press publish. Once it's published, it will give you the direct address. And that is something that you can use for your Twitter promotions when you start posting these uh, posts on Twitter. Once you're done, you can go ahead and view the post and let's take a look at what it is. It looks great. I love this post. It has everything to do with my life. I think it's awesome. Um, and so you can go back to, you can go ahead and copy that. And this is the public post that anyone can see. And again, this is the post that we're gonna want you to tweet um, because you're gonna want to use that on social media and make it public for anyone else to see. Now, when I go to my homepage, it may not show um, you know, the, the feed and so you will have to work with your homepage to bring those posts in. If you don't see them on the homepage just yet, that's gonna be okay. We'll work um, as we go. But as long as you have this main post and you tweet it out, it should be accessible uh, for other people to find uh, once you tweet it out. So that's just real quickly how to create a post and you can always edit these posts once you're done with it. Um, and so I'm gonna go back to my sites here on WordPress. I'm gonna go back to my posts and then I'm gonna go back into my lemon pepper chicken recipe post. And from here, you can always go back, edit it, and then just press update to update it. It will not change the permalink. The permalink will stay the same. And uh, you know, as long as you update it, this post will update as long as you just press the refresh button. And you can see my permalink updated. And this again is the post that I would want to use. So I like to normally have my backend in one tab where I'm making my posts and then I can publish it, and then I can open my new tab and refresh it and see what happened in the, in the front end of the site. So that's just a real quick um, tutorial on how to use WordPress blocks and just to create a very basic post. In future tutorials, I'll talk about more advanced blocks that you might wanna add and different features that, that WordPress offers when you're creating your website.